everybody my name is Connie Chavez and this is episode 5 of Bruja and Blessed today uh, we have an incredible episode for you this is an episode about mental health and brujeria and we have an amazing guest her name is Nitty Scott I'm sure you've heard of her <laughs> thank you for being here thank you thank you for having me I'm excited so she came to me and uh, we wanted to do a very special episode for you about mental health and there's so much stigma behind it and we felt it was very very important to highlight all the individual walks of life and whatever experience every person has so I'm always a fan of somebody if you haven't experienced something the best thing you can absolutely absolutely do is just simply listen I have never ever experienced any type of mental health condition that's why this I'm all years for this to learn to appreciate new values so Without further ado, thank you so much. Please, yeah. she's going to be taking us through some uh, self-care rituals as well as providing us resources. She has an amazing, amazing uh, club called the Lotus Club that she will get into shortly. Oh, yes, shout out to the Lotus Club. Mm -hmm. I love those girls. Um, so, hi, my name is Nitty Scott, a.k.a. The Little Buddha. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to give them a little bit of my story. Um, I, I definitely grew up with a dysfunctional childhood. Um, divorce, trauma, a lot of instability. I think I went to about nine different schools before I like graduated high school. So I was in lots of different households um, and schools, never really felt like I belonged in any particular place or whenever I started to, you know, develop a group of friends or develop a routine, I was uprooted and never got to really settle anywhere. Um, so when I was 17, I actually was what I consider my, um, an LGBT runaway. Um, I had There were issues in my household with expressing my sexuality at the time, um, or my sexual identity at the time, rather. Um, and I had to leave. Mm -hmm. I was um, physically abused. It was, it was just very difficult um, coexisting um, in the household that way. So I ran away to New York City with these big dreams, um, big goals, and a element of escape, you know, mm -hmm. escapism. Um, and unfortunately, when I got here, I was met with a lot of things that you, you think you might, a 17-year-old girl with no support system in the inner city right. might encounter. Um, not having any real structure, not having any real um, anything, support system, mm -hmm. family, people that I could trust. So I dealt with a string of traumatic um, experiences mm -hmm. um, from abusive relationships um, or relationships that were only you know fostered out of fear mm -hmm. um, and you know wanting to be in the presence of someone who made me feel safe and someone who made me feel secure and so just kind of you know having very unhealthy relationships because of that um, homelessness right. um, you know I was exposed to a lot of things and ended up like not being able to cope mm -hmm. um, started to have very intense panic attacks mm -hmm. I really couldn't identify what they were at the time mm -hmm. it was a very um, you know it's, it's, a, it's a physical manifestation right. of these emotions that you're carrying and not coping with mm -hmm. so um, you know I was dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety um, was eventually diagnosed with PTSD once I uh, decided to go to therapy and seek help, which took a very long time, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, and I have been managing my PTSD ever since then, which I think is a big, um, a big thing to note that most mental illness can be managed, mm -hmm. um, much like any other medical condition. Um, so it, it is something that if it is made a priority, um, it's it's something that I think I'm able to to function you know mm -hmm. um, there are good days there are bad days um, there are triggers there are you know things that have the potential to send me into you know an emotional spiral but there's a, a self-awareness there's a plan mm -hmm. um, that's in motion and there's definitely a support system mm -hmm. um, so you know with with that being said as somebody with a platform um, I just felt that it was my duty to advocate for awareness of, of mental health, um, dismantling stigma. And, you know, it's very personal for me because I did not discuss these things for a long time because I felt that if I'm going to be a voice for these issues, I have to somehow be cured and be able to provide solutions mm -hmm. where, you know, there are um, 
practices and rituals and habits and things that can help to alleviate symptoms. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's really no such thing as telling people, I've figured it all out, I got the cure. Mm -hmm. And I, for some reason, I think because of internalizing the stigma Mm -hmm. that, you know, I grew up with that's very prevalent in our communities and just in society, um, there was this part of me that was like, I can't still be wrestling with these issues Mm -hmm. um, and talk about them, which is the complete opposite. You know, it's it's like, it's like actually would make me um, very, very qualified to discuss Mm -hmm. these things. Um, well, so, I, yeah. I for one just want to thank you for being yeah. courageous enough and using your platform because I think it's very important to use your platform yeah. for good, especially if you're somebody in, in the limelight. And I just want to thank you because this is a very courageous thing to really help those out there. If you ever have any questions, please feel free to write them in the comments. We are going to be answering at the end of the segment. Um, but once again, just thank yeah. you. This is something very powerful for that I wish that everybody could attune to. Thank you. Yes, it's very um, personally empowering to... Um, just challenge the stigma just by being visible and, and you know and talking about things um and i think that's what i'm trying to um help help influence where mm-hmm. the especially in communities of color yeah. um and amongst both men and women but particularly with men there's a machismo mm-hmm. kind of mentality um, where seeking help isn't an option. Yeah, where seeking help is not an option. It's seen as weak mm-hmm. or being, you know, incapable on some level. So it it prevents us from um, acknowledging issues in the first place, um, and then seeking seeking help. And I know in my particular case, transgenerational trauma mm. is a very big thing for me. Um, I definitely I think I come from a line of women who have been traumatized and have passed that on to their daughters it um you know it it creates it creates a situation where you know i'm i'm even concerned about when i have children you know and being able to um foster a healthy relationship with them and just you know having having fear about that Mm -hmm. um but the stigma that occurs in the community i think it it definitely makes it so that we have a lot of people walking around with untreated, Absolutely. undiagnosed um, mental illness. And, you know, I think we were discussing some statistics, mm-hmm. actually, that were appalling yes. and were, you know, very actually upsetting. Um, but I, I think that there's a direct link, you know, mm-hmm. between why those numbers continue to increase and the way that mental health is treated within these communities. So I think one of the statistics we, we ran out, uh, ran through, was that, Forty percent of people who are diagnosed with a mental illness feel that people were uh, compassionate towards them. Only forty percent of people were compassionate towards them. That number should be a hundred percent. And and I know it's very difficult to try to to be an ally for people, but the best thing you can do is really absolutely listen and yeah. just listen to them and don't tell them, oh, it's just in your mind because that is absolutely untrue. Um, and just tell them how can I support you yeah. um, and the best thing that you're doing for us is providing us for as resources because a lot of people um, especially communities of color don't have the resources or the funds to be able to actually seek um, uh, medical help mm-hmm. and these these we're not saying that this is the end all be all this is just like step one to help aid certain things right um, so once again I thank you for that yeah no problem mm-hmm. um, and so there on that note mm-hmm. um, in terms of seeking help there is you know Brujeria, there are, you know, rituals and things that, you know, you can implement into your life to alleviate symptoms, to intentionally create positive spaces, mm-hmm. um, you know, for yourself. There, and then there's, but there's also practicality. Um, and I think that's very important to, to note mm-hmm. um, because in, when we're talking about making sure that we discuss mental illness as a valid medical condition, Absolutely. Um, that means that you have to acknowledge a chemical imbalance where they, there may be one. Um, and so while, you know, there are practices that exist for you um, to take advantage of, it's very important to acknowledge that, you know, a, a chemical imbalance will not be cured, you know, through essential oils and mm-hmm. meditation, you know. Can it help to alleviate the symptoms and make that experience and make the, the managing of your symptoms um, less difficult, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just something I definitely wanted to note, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that those these practices just shouldn't be used in place of, mm-hmm. you know, 
um, actually seeking real help. Um, they can assist with removing energy blocks, learning healthier habits or ridding yourself of bad ones, um, or help with essentially calming you down and helping you to focus enough to address your problems. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes that's very much the key right. as well. So yeah, um, so there are, you know, in Western medicine, there are also other ways to address psychological distress. Um, therapy is a big one. Um, there's different forms of therapy. You know, there's talk therapy, there's support groups, there's different, you know, kinds of spaces that um, can be used. Um, there's medications. Um, and it, medication is definitely a, not a one size fits all mm -hmm. situation. Um, and it's a lot of tinkering as well. Um, a lot of finding the right formula, mm -hmm. you know, for you, whether it be the correct medication, the correct dosage, um, you know, whatever the case may be. And it can be very scary. I would say for me, it was very scary, um, going into it. Um, and I had, like I said, a lot of internalized um, ideas about it already, and I sort of pre prejudged my condition, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, it's it's um, sad because I don't think many people would judge themselves for being diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. or, you know, leukemia or something like that, and as well as the people around them mm -hmm. um, validating this as something that is probably extremely hard, but unfortunately with with mental health it's something that you can't always see mm -hmm. um, and so because the scars and the pain are not always visible um, sometimes people don't validate it as, as real um, so yeah Definitely. do you yeah. think as a woman of color um, you felt that because you're so strong that you couldn't seek help right away or or that you could go after resources or anything Yes, um, I did feel like it was a a declaration of like I I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I need you know I need help. I can't do this by myself. But I think we have to shift our perspective and say that seeking help is not throwing your hands in the air and giving up. Mm -hmm. It's actually one of the most self aware, brave, mm -hmm. amazing things that you can do for yourself. It's actually a a act of self-love mm -hmm. um it's it's you know saying that you love yourself and you value your life um enough that you know this distress is worth addressing mm -hmm. um so i think you know it, for me there was definitely I, I had to shift my mentality and be proud of myself every every week you know that that i got up and i went and i you know talked and it, it, it was um, a process as well where it was like I got worse before I got better mm -hmm. because there was a lot of um, digging up mm -hmm. things that had not been addressed for my entire life mm -hmm. so you know there was a long time of like just processing emotions mm -hmm. and um, understanding them and then you know eventually like kind of like coming out on this other side mm -hmm. Um, that absolutely exists. I want you guys to know that it exists. There, there's another another side of this. There is a reality where you know you can have this illness and still function, still um, you know accomplish things that you want to. That's another thing where the the face of mental illness I think is very stereotypical, mm -hmm. um, and people have ideas about what you like people you you may be surprised with what a depressed or anxious person can accomplish mm -hmm. you know it doesn't mean that they're like debilitated mm -hmm. um so or or unfortunately very um very shallow mm -hmm. things where people think that like you know beautiful women you know like they there's no way like i've literally had people say to me but you're so pretty how could you be depressed? This is why we're here to and break the stigma that is, and, and stereotypes. Like, you know, and it's it's just like it's so dismissive. It's yeah. so because you're pretty that you can't experience it. Like it's like it's amazing. So my people, my foundation doesn't let me feel doesn't these allow for depression yeah. to soak into my pores. You know, like it's just it's crazy. So um, you know, so I definitely think that we have to you know acknowledge that the person next to you, you know, your mother, your father, your teacher. Um, anyone could be dealing with these issues um, and that there's just no 
um, one way mm -hmm. that you know people who who live with this are. There's just no one way. Um, or being violent or you know things like that. There's actually you know studies that show that most people who cope with these things never actually act out mm -hmm. on those emotions. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I just think, I think, I think we get a bad rep. Absolutely. I you think know? this should be an absolute uh, call to action to society that because you don't wear your mental illness, you know, on your sleeve, that we should become a compassionate society. Right. And we should stop passing judgment. You know, why did that, per that person is lazy? Why is that person taking the elevator? Well, possibly that person has a disability and it needs to take the elevator that you can't see. Right. So this should be an absolute call to action. I, if you take anything away from this Blue Hand Blessed episode, I would like you to be a little more compassionate to the next person and just pass it forward, pay it forward, and, and just attempt. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, we, we have some questions. Yeah, do we have some on? questions? <laughs> do you think that being a Bruja and using a natural way for a spiritual connection is best for dealing with your illness? Um, they mentioned that medications of sorts are sometimes blankets. Mm -hmm for these conditions? Yeah, um, honestly, I can't say with a, you know, a general, in a generalized way, what is the best for anyone in particular. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's about finding your formula. Um, so I, I practice a combination of, um, you know, spiritual and emotional self-care as well as medication and therapy. And that combination of, of things has worked for me. Um, you know, medications do have side effects and, you know, it's really a matter of um, also like a relationship with, you know, a, a psychiatrist or whatever to really be comfortable with discussing, you know, what your fears are, what your goals are, what um, and, and how medication makes you feel. So I, you know, our I think our main goal here is to discuss both the curanderismo and and the practical um you know western ways of of addressing it so i would say for me it's a little bit of both but i strongly encourage you to seek out what yours might be how can one who is mentally ill and doesn't understand brujeria as a method to help alleviate symptoms go about getting started Watch this Bruja Blast episode. <laughs> We're going to go into that in a, in a second, but she's definitely going to go into uh, just how to heal yourself and get balance and balance your energies that can help uh, alleviate stuff like that. Yeah. Um, should I get into that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, let's get into it. And we'll keep answering questions, so please yeah, of course. leave them in the comments. Yeah, yeah. So we have, um, so have self-care and like relaxation techniques um, that always work great for me. Um, intentionally creating a, a space that edifies you is a big one. Um, candles, I got my candle here, mm -hmm. got my candles here. Um, candles are really good for igniting energy that may have been like stagnant before, so that's really good. Um, smudging with bundles of sage, mm -hmm. um, that definitely helps to clear energies, um, lets off a wonderful aroma. Um, spell baths, I love mm. spell baths. It's so, it's like you just feel like you're just, it, it's very, it's very bruja because it's mm -hmm. like you dip into your own potion it's mm -hmm. this you know little cauldron that you've made for yourself um, and you're and you're worshiping yourself you know a um, little bit of lavender oil eucalyptus oil yeah. rose roses um, you know flowers bath salts minerals things like that um, to get the aromatherapy going um, feng shui which is actually mm -hmm. the uh, Chinese art of learning to harmonize with the environment um, it's very specific um, and it is something that has to be like studied, but it's like, you know, dividing the room into north, south, east, and west, and basically deciding how you're going to arrange items in your home, um, even animals in your home, they should be kept in a certain area. Um, and it's something that has definitely worked for me and helped me to like organize my space in a way that makes me feel tranquil. Um, but, you know, Self-care is not just bubble baths mm -hmm. and, you know, those th types of pampering. Pampering is definitely an example. Um, but there are other examples of self-care. Um, it can be social, intellectual. Mm -hmm. um, so creating healthy boundaries mm -hmm. in your life is an example of self-care. Um, 
career development, a creative pursuit, um, working on your relationships, you know, the ones that, that you have in your life, nurturing those relationships. Um, you know, there's there are other forms of self-care that also just add to your overall wellness. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you know, I hit the botanica a lot, you know, and get my treasures. Mm -hmm. um, interacting with nature is a huge one for me. Mm -hmm. Actually, as, as somebody who, I'm, I'm originally from Florida, mm -hmm. so I grew up like Florida and, and Puerto Rico and like, like chancletas okay. and palm trees and digging my toes in the sand mm -hmm. and you know I feel like I traded my jungle for a concrete jungle mm -hmm. you know for a different kind of jungle so I've been in this jungle of steel mm -hmm. and concrete and um, you know so there's definitely a feeling of detachment sometimes mm -hmm. um, being in the city which I think all inner city brujas can probably relate to yeah, um you know i we miss the beach we miss the trees and you know and i think it's even deeper than that you know mm -hmm. i think it's the the diaspora mm -hmm. speaking you know Absolutely. um but getting in touch with nature is is a huge one for me um and even here in new york you, you know we got the botanical gardens you know mm -hmm. central park you know just really sitting and being with one um being one with nature is a big one um meditation and breathing mm -hmm. techniques um that meditation saved my life i i will say um was it hard for you to to pretty much sit down and, and focus yourself it was a process mm -hmm. it was a process because there was a lot of mental clutter and a lot of noise that i think we can all relate to mm -hmm. um but mine was intense you know like i i was like overthinking and um waking up like from the minute i opened my eyes just kind of waking up and having immediate doom mm -hmm. just wash over me a feeling of I am going to die today and no particular reason why mm -hmm. um, and it was it was very scary and it was very intense um, but meditation taught me that the safest place in the world can be inside of yourself mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that we cannot control um, so many you know from from the, our little interactions to you know natural disasters and sickness and you know these huge huge things so there has to be um a place within yourself that is calm mm -hmm. is steady is assured mm -hmm. of um purpose mm -hmm. you know meaning in the world and i believe that that exists i, I felt like I, I found it that was my uh my actually the art of chill album was actually mm -hmm. conceptualized around that and essentially saying that I have found my art of chill, mm. um, you know, and interesting. I, I never yeah. ever connected the dots. Yeah, like that. yeah, it was, and even like the whole girl. I'm I'm so artsy. Mm -hmm. so the artsy. um the the make the whole uh, tape was it started with uh, a Tibetan medita meditation, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of like the project is taking you on a journey, mm -hmm. um, where the uh, meditation starts and then all the records are kind of like. The thoughts and feelings that one might go through mm -hmm. um, during a meditation, and then there's the end of the meditation that also ends with the gong, mm -hmm. which is very, you know, it's a practice. Um, so putting that album together must have been self care as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and you know, there there's really a plethora of resources when it comes to meditation because there's so many different versions, even. Um, amongst different cultures, mm -hmm. there are different forms of meditation. And I personally feel that it's all there for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all there for me to to pick at and use. And, you know, I've tried meditations where I'm like, that was a little long. His voice was creepy. <laughs> uh, da, 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 you know, so it's just like you, you kind of try, you try them on and you find, I have like my favorite meditations. I have the ones that, you know, I have specific meditations. Oh, this one is for gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this one is for forgiveness. Um, I meditate, you know, or today I want to um, plant a seed and, and uh, set my intention forward um, for something that I'd like to accomplish in my life. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, different meditations that, that can be utilized. Honestly, YouTube is mm -hmm. awesome. Like, YouTube is really awesome <laughs> um, for meditations. Um, do we have any questions? Any other questions? Yes. How do you handle people who do not understand your mental issues? That's that's a tough one, um, but for me, I feel like being misunderstood can be an opportunity for education. Mm. You know, it's you know, and and it can be very triggering, and there, you know, there are emotions that you might have to work through in order to do that. 
But for me, I, I take it as an opportunity to um, to educate and to like I like I will address it so like I will confront it so head on, mm -hmm. and I kind of feel like that's the only way that we can get the conversation going. Mm -hmm. It's like not being afraid to make it uncomfortable, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, not being afraid to just be so brutally honest. Like when someone's like, how are you? Mm -hmm. And you're not okay. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us feel like it's a, it's a pleasantry. So mm -hmm. it's like, when you ask me, how how you doing? You don't really wanna know how I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'm cool. I'll be like, actually I'm having suicidal ideations and it's really tough for me to get through today. Mm -hmm. How are you? You know, like. You just gotta keep it a buck, mm -hmm. like you know that. That's what I do. I, I keep it. I keep it a buck, and I let people know that this is this is very real, um, and it it's been very effective. You know, like I've I think I've I know that I've had conversations with people that um, totally brought things home for them, or you know, just opened them up to what the experience might be like. And I remember even you know talking to my father before, and him um, not really understanding like what I was going through like really not being able to grasp it um and me like you know I, I pull out metaphors analogies whatever I have to do Venn diagrams whatever mm -hmm. you need you know like I, I'm down to, I'm down to break it down mm -hmm. um and I've you know sat there and been like you know if you saw me in the middle of the street leaking you know from my arm or something and I'm limping and you know it's like wow you really need medical attention mm -hmm. but if I tell you that you know I, I can't stop thinking these racing thoughts and you know I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do these very like key words you know that that I, people use and, and phrases and things that we express when we're going through psychological distress um, kind of teaching people to look out for those things and to acknowledge those things as very real warnings and very real cries for help so I have one more. Mm -hmm. what form of meditation do you practice um, well, I practice Zen Buddhist meditation for the most part, um, but I do switch it up. I mean, I, I do switch it up a lot. Um, I do guided meditations mm -hmm. when I am almost like unable to, I don't know, maybe direct my thoughts the way that I want to. So guided meditations, and those are really good for beginners as well because they help you to ease into the process of meditation and understanding it. Um, but I've gotten to a point where I'm kind of a pro, so I can meditate on my own. I can meditate anywhere, mm -hmm. um, and that's amazing. You know, like I can be on a train, mm -hmm. surrounded by chaos, and that and it becomes a skill where it's mm -hmm. like I can zone out of all these smells, all these sounds, all of these emotions, and I can actually detach and separate myself from my feelings mm -hmm. and see them as like physical things that don't belong to me that are like fluttering around like you know like I don't have to um become my feelings that's very um, powerful yeah I it think really I, is that sounds to me um like as, as a very good step one yeah if you're ever dealing with trauma anxiety or depression maybe I would I would say go into meditation and I think it, it'd be very powerful to just hone in on your emotions and try to to take yourself out to try to heal yourself yeah Another quieting thing. your mind you know there's um mudras as well yoga Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of yoga. Um, it it feel, it feels so good, and it's like you know it's it's physical activity, so it's getting your endorphins going. But then it's also it's mindful. You know, you have intention. Um, you know, you, there's literally like specific moves that you're doing, and as you're doing them, you're thinking about all the people that you love and all of the life sustaining resources that you have today that you are grateful for. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful. And if I do that for 15 minutes when I wake up. I'm almost positive that I'm going to have a great day mm -hmm. or if things don't go my way today I'm going to be able to cope with that. Mm -hmm. Nikki, where can the viewers and our readers follow you on your journey to learn more about this meditation and you? Yeah absolutely so I'm on all uh, social networks um, Twitter and Instagram are the same at Nitty Scott MC N-I-T-T-Y-S-C-O-T-T-M-C um, Facebook as well, Nitty Scott MC. I will be launching my website soon, so you guys will be able to just have all things Nitty Scott in like a central place. Um, and yeah, I also do the um, the Lotus Club mm -hmm. support group. Oh, um, yeah, I, that? yeah. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. When she told me about this, it was just so empowering to see 
a woman that is just really helping and supporting other people because this is something that is really prevalent in our community. Yeah. And as Latinos, we really don't feel that we feel so strong that we don't want to seek help. And, and she's really doing that for our community. Absolutely. Like for me, it was like I was feeling so like I want I want to heal, you know, with my sisters, mm -hmm. you know, um, internalized misogyny is a very big one for oh, me. Yeah. Um, I, my, I did not have agency over my body for a long time. Um, you know, I, I grew up just thinking things that sound just, uh, that are just, that I just completely reject now. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, for a long time, um, I internalized, you know, the, the, the way that we treat our, our women. And that, I never realized how much it kept uh, how much it affected my relationships with other women mm -hmm. and the way that I related to them and You know, I just I found myself last year really trying to cope with all the trauma that I've been through in my life and Wanting a space where I could express that safely with other women who relate mm -hmm. and when I acknowledged that I had a need for that I also noticed that there was nowhere to get that. Mm. So for me, you know, a part of my activism is filling the void and creating the space mm -hmm. if it doesn't exist. I needed it and I kind of just talked about it on social media and was like, I'm going through a lot. I you know, I need I need a space to mm -hmm. to work this all out. And you know, and I was just kind of like like what about y'all? <laughs> and a lot of women and and even men um, you know, responded and I was like, okay, so you, you guys need this too. You need this too. Cool. And I started to get on my organizational stuff, mm -hmm. calling around, looking for spaces, doing research on how to really facilitate a group the best way. I got, um, social workers and therapists involved, um, resources. I collected resources even from, you know, the therapist that I see. So I took some time to just, you know, figure it all out. And, you know, we had our first meeting maybe four months ago. Um, and we, you know, we meet monthly. And we do a lot. We do a lot. We do talk therapy. We do um, art therapy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, act, trust building activities. And we're going to expand, you know, beyond that soon to just having more like outings and, you know, mm -hmm. things that we can enjoy together um, as, as sisters, you know. And I really feel like I have inherited sisters mm -hmm. um you know we're just we're just so open with each other we have so much in common way more than we thought we did um and sometimes sometimes that is life-changing mm -hmm. and life-saving just to know that somebody else feels like sometimes they can't get through their day as well um so it is amazing the lotus club please get in contact with me if you are in need of, of a space um, to discuss these things and shout out to my girls i love you what's the email that can reach you at so my email is well if you want to get in touch with me for other stuff um is nitty's got mc booking at gmail.com anything related to the lotus club support group is lotus club nyc at gmail.com mm -hmm. so either one of those will work wow well this has been extremely inspiring extremely educational i really want to thank you for creating a safe space here for all women that need support please reach out to nitty she's doing incredible things and as i said in the beginning this is very courageous of you so thank, thank you for you. sharing your stories we're all about visibility here and and we're all always about just highlighting every single experience in our community so once again thank you so much thank we'll you. catch you next time next thursday at 1 p.m Bruham blessed Ladies and gentlemen, Nitty Scott. Thank you. <laughs>